Okay, so there it is. So, um, <clears throat> log steps. Remember what I basically said? It's like a log countdown, right? So I tried to key your memory. You want to count down. You want to get rid of the logs, basically. So, um, yeah. So I'll just say, <clears throat> um, well, yeah, I don't know if I want to write everything out again. You're going to basically count down the logs. So two logs become, well, let me put it this way. Make, make into one log. So I wrote it up last time. Make two logs. If you have two logs, we don't even have two logs. So this one. Make two logs into one log by the properties. Right? You may, meaning adding becomes times and subtraction becomes divide. Remember that whole thing? And then step two, <clears throat> lose the log. And whenever you lose the log, base stays the base. Base stays the base. Other two switch. Am I still on the screen up there? Yeah. And then number three, solve it. And then number four, <clears throat> check. You got to check that answer does not make inside of any log on the original, back on the original, zero or negative, right? You can't have zero or negative Back in the original. We always check with the original. So those were the steps I wrote up before. And I tried to summarize them all by basically saying it's like a log countdown. You're just trying to get rid of the logs, right? Two logs, one log, no log. That's what it's all about. You get a three by five card. I said that a couple times, right? In the test next week, you get a three by five card, so you can write anything you want on both sides. But there might be too much stuff to write it all down. So log countdown. Yeah. Yeah. Type on there, do anything you want. Yeah. Right, anything you want, both sides. So, yeah, so as I look at this then, I go, okay, I've got 4 minus B is log 9C plus 2. Well, maybe I'm just going to go to a new screen here. Is that okay? Did you get all that down? Did you guys get all that down? I wrote it down. It's the same instructions I wrote down last week. All right, so, um, all right, so let's solve this thing now. So 4 minus B is log of 9c plus 2. <clears throat> so they want me to solve for the c. See how they're saying c equals? They want me to get the c alone. But anyway, it's basically the same steps we've been doing. So when you look at that log, you think, I got to get rid of the log. Huh? It's a log countdown, so get rid of that log. So how do I get rid of that log? Well, you just cross it off. And when you lose a log, what happens? The base stays the base, the other two switch. Now, what do I mean base? Base is like, base just means bottom, right? The base of the table here. So where's the base? I don't see any lower down bottom number, so what is it? Yeah. It's 10. Yeah, remember when you have the plain log word, the base, if it's missing, it's 10. If you have L in, natural log, it's E, right? Those are the two understood bases, invisible bases, right? All right, so yeah, it's 10. So when you see that, you go, okay, there it is. So the base stays base, which, which means the base is going to continue to have something on it, is what I'm saying when I say that. Base stays the base. It's going to have something on it. The other two switch. What do I mean other two? I mean everything else in the problem other than the 10, meaning all of that and all of that switch positions. Instead of 10 to the 9C plus 2, it's 10 to the 4 minus B, and the 9C plus 2 jumps over there. Does that make sense what happened there? Base stays the base. Everything else switches. We got rid of the log. No more log. That's how we lose a log, right? Base stays the base. Other two switch. Now it's just a matter of they're asking me to get C alone, right? From the beginning they said solve for C, so subtract 2. 9C, 4 minus B. You can't go 10 minus 2 is 8 there, can you? Because the 10 has a funny base on it, funny power on it. And then divide by the 9. There we go. There's our answer. That's what Math Excel wants you to type in. Which is a little messy. Questions on that? You okay with those steps? So it's, it's always about losing the logs when they're in there, right? You just lose the logs. You cross out the log, base stays the base, other two swap, and then you just get the seal on. Is that homework okay? Those, all those properties? Monique, was it fun?
<laughs> All right. You good? Let me know if you have questions. Grab me after class. I'd be glad to help. Okay. All right. Let's move. Okay. So we've got 2 to the power of 4x minus 7. We've got a 4 over there. Okay. I'm going to show you two ways to do this problem, which I know can be confusing sometimes. I try not to do that. I used to do that all the time when I was a brand new teacher. I thought, oh, I'll show them several ways. I'll be so helpful. I just confused everybody. Then I realized they don't like that. Students don't like that. One way, over and over and over again. That's what they prefer. Anyway, so that's what I'm going to do. But the reason I'm going to show you two ways on this is because there is a way that's quite a bit easier, but you can't always do it. I like to give you the one-size-fits-all way, just the way that will always work for you. So let me just show you that first off. That'll just always work. You can do that every time on the exam. It'll be good. Now, every time in this situation, that's a lot of the battle. What do I mean by this situation? That's a lot of the battle on a math test. That's why I give you guys those practice exams because, you know what I mean, you can do all the homework and do a good, I hope you are doing all the homework and doing a good job in the homework. Absolutely required in a math class. Just, I don't know how else you learn the stuff. But, um, but then you get to the exam and they're all mixed up, huh? Like the homework, you do the same thing like eight, nine times in a row. On the exam, it's one of these and one of those and then back to here. So you do need to spend time with that practice exam to make sure you learn it outside of context. You know what I mean by that? So I'm going to be trying to help you with that today and tomorrow or Thursday as we get ready for the exam. So what's unique here, like what you want, what, I'm going to try to give you a tag for each kind of problem. But this kind of problem, the special thing, X is in the power zone. That's what's weird about this category of problems we're now going into. X has climbed into power. Notice, X is up there in the power zone. So that's, that's different. That's quite a, quite a challenging deal, right? Th think with me. I think if you, don't, if you appreciate the problem more for a minute, then it'll stick with you better, right? So X is in power. So it's not just that it has powers, but that X itself is in the power. What do I mean? Like here's something with X... There's a power. That's no big deal. We just root it, right? We don't care about powers when it's just numbers. Even if it was x to the fifth. Remember, we've done those. We just one fifth power both sides, right? We did those in some of the earlier homes. We had like 20th power up there. We were just one twentieth power both sides. Who cares? No big deal if x is just in the base. But if x itself gets up there in the power zone, right? X, it, x itself is up here doesn't just have powers. X itself climbed up into the power zone. That is weird. I mean, what are you going to do? How are you going to solve that? Break down the four. Yeah. <clears throat> what, what are you going to do with the four? Two to the second power. Good job. Yeah, that's the quicker way, and I will show that way. But let me, the reason I don't want to show that way right away, because you're totally right, that's the quick and nice way of this one. But the reason is, what if that was a three? Now that won't work, huh? But they're, they're going to do just what you said. If I click on the help button, they're going to do just what you said. They can make that two squared, and then the powers are equal, and boom, boom. And then about, and they'll do that with you for like three or four problems, and then all of a sudden they'll make it a number that won't do that. So I'm just going to show you the one way right now that will work for all of them. Yeah, so what if that was a three? What if it wasn't, you know, something we couldn't make two squared, you know? Then what would we do? How are we going to solve that? See how impossible that is? I mean, what, you can't divide by two or something, because that's not two times 4x minus 7. It's 2 to the 4x minus 7 power. You can't just divide by the 2. You can't subtract the 2. I mean, what are you going to do? Yeah, it's logs. It's logs. Because remember that third property of logs where powers come down? That's why we like logs. You know, that's what... That's what you ever wonder, we, 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 we're, we're doing logs now, right? What if somebody grabbed you on the streets and they said, hey, you're taking one of those college math classes. What's a logarithm? What would you say? What's a logarithm? You're in one of them fancy college math classes. You're doing logs, right? You go, yeah. So what's a logarithm? What would you say? The, if somebody had asked me, what's that? The inverse of an exponent. That's a good answer. Yeah, I wouldn't have known that answer when I was first doing that. I would have went, I don't know. Give me one of them. I can do it. I can move the rules around. But I don't know what the crazy thing is. Yeah, you're right. It's the inverse of an exponential. Like You think, what, what are logs? They're the inverse function of exponentials. We'll see it perfectly on this one. In other words, they undo powers. That's what they are. That's what logarithms are. They're the opposites of powers. So here's where we sit. So somehow you want to put in your 3 by 5 card, put in your memory for the test a week from today, next Tuesday. When x is in the power zone, try to give you a tag on this one, log both sides, natural log. So let me just write that. So x is in power, ln both 
sides. And I'm just going to do L in. They're going to play games. If you do the show me an example, question help, they'll do it one way and then another. Let's just do it one size fits all. It'll always work this way. All right, L in both sides. Power comes down to the front. And then, then you just solve it. It's e. Once you get that power out of power, it's cake. So let's come over here. So I'm going to go ln of this side, ln of that side. So just take the ln of both sides. So just put a brand new ln, natural log, that wasn't there. Could you do regular log of both sides? You totally could. In fact, that's what they will show. But in a few minutes, they're going to have e as the base, and then you have to do natural log. Well, you don't have to, but it's a lot easier. So, again, I'm just going to say, let's just always do natural log. It'll work in every situation. So natural log on both sides. And then, remember the, third, remember the three properties of logs? That third property is the best one. It lets that power come down to the front. That power comes down to the front. We have nothing else like it in the math world that takes powers down. That's what logs are. They're the inverse of powers. It, bring, it undoes that power, takes it down. So now it's no big deal. Now we can solve. I mean, it's not simple, but at least x is not in the power zone. Now we can work to get this x alone. I'm going to first divide off this natural log of 2, because that's times, right? Obviously, times is divide. So I'm going to divide by the natural log of 2 now. Gonzo. So now I have 4x minus 7. Is ln 3? I don't even know what ln 3 over ln 2 is. You can't cancel the lns or something like that. Those are functions. You know what I mean? That's like f of 3 over f of 2. You can't cancel them. It's not multiply. Is everybody aware of that? You getting the hang of that? Right? That's not, that's not times. That's not ln. That's ln of 3. That's 3 plugged into the ln machine. And 2 plugged into the other. So you know, it just has to stay like it is. So um, add the 7. Or I'm just going to... Yeah, okay. I'll just add the 7. Add 7 to both sides. So we got 4x equals ln 3 over ln 2 plus 7. Last step, divide by 4, huh? Um, <clears throat> let me show you an easy way to do that. When you divide by 4 on both sides, you could go like over 4. That's okay. I mean, I'm fine with that in a test, and that's true. It, it, Math Excel might not take it. I don't know how picky they are because that's a little bit ugly. It's fractions over fractions. What you can do, guys, when you, when you divide by 4, you could just divide both of them by 4. That means put a 4... Put a 4 into that denominator and into that denominator. Same thing. And it's a little cleaner looking. You guys tracking with me? Did you understand that? I divided both sides by 4. Which What does it mean to divide something by 4? Four? 4 goes in the denominator. That's dividing by 4. So I just stuck the 4 in the denominator and stuck the 4 in the denominator. That's the same truth. You, you can do the one big bar with the 4. Which I'll, I'll give you credit on a test, but math Excel may, might hassle you. I don't know because it's technically a complex fraction, fractions over fractions. They might have a problem. I don't know. So just take it. This is a little cleaner. Denominator, denominator. That's dividing is denominator. There's no difference. That's what it means to divide something. <coughs> Put it in the denominator. There's our answer. And now they might want a calculator, do they? No, no, they want a fraction. Oh, simplified fraction. Yeah, they're not going to take a complex fraction. Yeah, got to do it this way. Yeah. So that's what they want. Right there. So with the four, since you gave us three instead of the ln four, oh would that be able yeah, to I never went back. To <laughs> Sorry. Would you yeah. Be able to divide or no? Um. Yeah, yeah, what was it? No, no, it would still be the same. Well, that's not true. Yeah. Good point. Good point. I didn't think about that. Um. Yeah. So. Sorry. I. I it was four. I. I forgot. Let's go back. I mean, you don't have to go back. I'm just going to fix it right here. Thanks for that reminder. So it was really four. Four, 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 yeah. And right there, yeah, you better divide. Yeah, it's not going to take that. Divide these guys on your calculator. LN4, you guys got it? LN4 divided by LN2? Two, two? The answer is 2. It is 2. So this will become 2 over 4 plus 7 over 4, which is 9 over 4. Yeah, thanks. That cleans up quite a bit. Did you see that? Yeah, so the ln4 divided by ln2 does do something nice. Yeah, so you might wonder, well, how do we know, Mr. Aaron? Just try it. Like when I had ln3, you know, just try dividing in calculator. If it's some ugly decimal, then just leave it. But if it's 4 over 2, right here, this should have become 2. Yeah, I should have just made that 2 right there. Yeah, let me, let me go back and say this a little nicer. Yeah, right there, as soon as you got a couple lns, just try them. 
on your calculator. If it comes out clean, great. If it doesn't, you better leave it. So as soon as you get LN2 over LN4 right there, you would just try it on your calculator, and it would come out a nice clean 2. Then you just add 7 to both sides. That makes sense. This comes out a clean 2. <clears throat> then you add 7 to both sides, and you get 4x is 9, divide by the 4, and you're done. Good, thank you. Questions on that one? Um, in what situation would you end up with it not being a real number? Not being a real number? That's one of the options. Oh, it is. I don't know. We'll see. If they give me one, I'll let you know. I just can't think of it off the top of my head, to tell the truth. Yeah, no, we don't need to check anything. Don't need That's only when they start with logs. That's different than using a log. Are you seeing the difference there? The original problem did not have any logs, did it? So only when the original question has an LN or a regular log, any kind of log, that you have to check those. Because remember, the original inside of the log can't be negative or zero. I didn't have any logs in this no need to check. I used the log halfway through, but that's different than being given a log, right? Don't need to check anything. Other questions on that one? Not good? All right. Let's group, like every group. And so some of you guys, this is um, super easy for you, and you're just like, I got it. Show me the quick way, Mr. Heron. And some of you guys are barely hanging on and saying, don't give me another method, Mr. Heron. So if you don't want to see this, don't look. Here's the other way. You could right away say, yeah, that 4 is 2 squared. That's right. If you can make the bases the same, then that is easier. So now, if 2 to something equals 2 to something, those somethings must be equal. Oops. Those two powers must be equal, or 2 to one of them wouldn't equal 2 to the other. Right? That makes sense? If 4 is gone, right? If I told you, hey, 2 to some power is equaling 2 to some other power. Well, those powers must be the same, or 2 to one of them wouldn't equal 2 to the other if they were different. Right? Yeah. That logical? So you can just cut out the bases by logic, right? You guys track it with me? Two to something equals two to something. Those somethings have to be equal. Or two to one of them wouldn't equal two to the other if they were different powers, right? Two to the third doesn't equal two to the fourth, right? Of course not, because powers are different. If I tell you two to whatever is equaling two to whatever, those whatevers must be equal, right? All right, so the powers are equal, then just add seven. 4x is 9 divided by the 4. See how much easier that is? That is nice when you can make the bases the same. But it won't work when the bases can't be made the same. So I'm giving you the one method that always works, natural log. That'll always work. All right. All right, so let's try that one. 6 to the minus 3x power is 12. Nice. How are you going to recognize that one? Like on the test with everything else in the world on there. How are you going to look at that and think of this whole thing? X is in power. That's the mark, right? No other time have we had X in the power zone like this. So give that a try. X is in power. So you got to get that thing out of power. So what are you going to do, first step? Drop the base. Drop the... Convert the... Yeah, if you want to do the quick way, if you happen to check 1296 and calculate, that, you can find out. But for those who want to do it just the one way every time, natural on both sides, right? Just L in on both sides. L in on both sides. So that's what I'm saying. When, when you've got X in the power zone, just L in both sides. That'll always work. So L in both sides, and then the power comes down. It takes the power out of power. <clears throat> to there, right? Now the power's out of power. It's just down on the whole base level. It's no problem now. Now what do we do next to solve for x? Divide by ln 6. Right? So try this. If you do this on your calculator, let me see, what is that? Is it 4? It's a big 4, huh? So it's minus 3x equals 4, huh? Not good. And then, last step, divide by the minus 3. There we go. Is that good? Questions I can answer? So that's how you solve when x is in power. You natural log both sides and bring the power down. That's what logs are. 
the reverse of power functions. That's why we have them in the math world, because we have all kinds of real life problems we have to solve where x is in the power zone, and what does it for us is natural log, or any log, really. Okay, so we've got 3 fifths to the x power equals 125 twenty sevenths. All right, if you're looking at this question on the test in a week, next Tuesday, what would you think right away? Why did I take this crazy class anyway? No, maybe, maybe you'll think that too. But what should you think to solve this problem? L in both sides. L in both sides, because x is in power. That's the unique mark, x is in power, L in both sides. Anybody just see the answer? Yeah. Can you just see what it's going to be if you know the power rules and everything? Anybody know? It's going to be negative 3. Because the negative will flip it. And the third power is what makes 5 to 125. And the third 3 to the third is 27. If you know those rules well from out to 2, the answer is obviously negative 3. That's okay. If you're not sure of that, just do natural log of both sides. You'll get there. It'll be negative 3. L in both sides. Good power comes down. It's a great thing about logs. They bring... Powers down. Last step to get x alone. Divide by that whole ln of three-fifths thing. And I would just type that whole thing on your calculator. It'll come out negative three, right? You can type all that in. Getting that okay? If you have troubles with the calculator, grab me after. Just ten seconds, probably I can show you how to fix things. Any questions on that? Is that okay? All right, stop me if you... Okay, so 5 to the x plus 2 equals 6 to the x. That's a messy x there. All right, so natural log both sides, right? Bring that power down. Those powers, both of them, will come down. Natural log both sides. Are we good to there? Then the power. Now here's where this one's going to get messier. So let me help you with this. So bring that x plus 2 down. Up here. Okay, we good to there, guys? So I brought the x plus 2 down. I brought the x down. I don't know why I made that such a big x. All right, there we go. So now, here, I'm assuming you got to here okay, right? Here's where it gets a little messy. You, you don't want to divide by the ln5 right now. Don't do that. Why not? How do I know? Well, just watch me do it and watch how it gets me nowhere. If I was to divide by the ln5 right now, you might think, well, yeah, boom, that's great. And then, then you just got x plus 2, so then you just need to subtract the 2. Yeah, but I got the x on the other side, too. That's not good, right? See, this one's different because it has x in two locations, right? Two locations. We don't want that. So, um, so we do not want to just divide by the ln 5 because it's not a matter of just getting this x alone. If it was, yeah, that'd be great, right? If all we had to do was take this x on the left and get him alone, then yeah, divide by the ln 5, subtract the 2, boom. But it's more to it than that. We got him too. So don't do that. What do you do then? You distribute. Remember now, 
LN5 is just a number. You can get it on your calculator. Here, I'll get it on my calculator. What is it? I, I'm not going to use it, but I just want you to remember it's 1.6 something. LN5 is just a number, right? LN5 is just a number. Just treat, what if there was a 4 here? What would you do? Just trivia, right? It's just a number. Don't, don't, don't think more of the LN5 than you should. It's just a number. So boom, boom. And so what would you do with any number? You'd distribute, so you get x ln 5 plus 2 ln 5. It's just a number. So is the ln 6. Those are just numbers. Just weird numbers, right? Good to there. Now what do we do? Well, let me ask you this. What if I gave you 7x plus 10 is 9x? What would you do to solve? Yeah, you would just go, well, look, just get rid of that one, you know, and boom. Oh, well, same thing here. Subtract the x, l, and 5. Subtract the x, l, and 5, right? And just get rid of that one, right? Same thing. Exactly. See how it's the same thing? Ellen's just a weird, l, and 5, l, and 7, l, and 6, whatever. They're just a weird number. Do what you would do with any numbers next to x, right? Get, get rid of them. Or get, you know what, I can probably say it better. Let me, let me say it in a way that would be more helpful to you. Um... Get the x's on the same side. So let me just write a little note, because I know this really does mess people up. So let me slow down and write a little note for you. So when x in two places, that's what we have here, x in two places, number one, get the x's on the same side. Factor out x and divide. That's the game plan. When the x is in two locations, like one on each side, get them on the same side, factor out the x, and divide. So that means I'm going to grab this whole term. I'm going to go, you jump over there. Now, what I'm really doing is I'm subtracting x, l, and 5, which is what I wrote just a minute ago, but I'm just saying it in a different way, right? Is it okay if I just start jumping things around? They'll just switch signs, right? We can just skip a step that way. Is that okay? When something jumps, well, and jumps, I mean added or subtracted, to the other side of the equal sign, it just switches the sign in front of it, right? That way we can go a little quicker. So 2 ln 5 then equals x ln 6 minus x ln 5. We can't combine those in any way. We can't subtract. You can't subtract those and go x ln 1. That's not true, right? That, the 6 and that 5 are plugged into a toaster, so to speak, like plugged into a function. You can't just 6 minus 5 is 1. No, they're in the toaster. They're in the ln. You can't deal with them directly. They're buried, right? Okay, so where, where are we at? Now, well, now I'm running out of room completely. Now, let me come up here. So 2LN5 2LN5 equals XLN6 minus X. LN5, am I on the screen? Yeah. All right, factor out. So what I said is factor out the X. Get them on the same side. Factor out the X and divide. LN6 minus LN5. LN6 minus LN5. Boom, X is alone. We did it. We isolated X. So that's how you do it. When you get the X in two places like that, you get them on the same side, factor out X and divide. There's our answer. I don't know if they want a decimal or... Oh, nearest thousandth. So you guys have your calculator? Yeah, it'd be, it'd be worth it for us to type that into our calculator. And calculator, I'm going to type it into my calculator and tell you the answer. But I'm going to see if you remember a certain thing that you need to do and not mess this up. This, de definitely do this, guys. This is worth your time. I'm not just doing busy work here. Most, uh, half the people or so mess this up on their calculator. And then it's a very frustrating experience trying to do your Math Excel homework. Because Math Excel keeps saying no. There it is rounded to the, th I think they said thousands place, didn't they? Yeah, nearest thousands. Right here. Thir three places. So 17.655. Okay, you might be getting, let me, let, me, let me tell you what you might be getting. You might be getting 0 0.187. 0 0.187.
0.187 is not right. If you're getting 0.187, what you've got to realize, what you've got to remember, is when you type into the calculator, you've got to put parentheses around that denominator. Un unless you have one of those newer, nicer kind that actually show the fraction, then it just does it automatically. You don't have to worry about parentheses. But if you have an older one like I do that lays everything on the flat line. So here, let me, let me go to a new screen. This is getting messy. Where were we? So we were at 2ln5. No. XLN5 plus 2 in it plus 2 L and 5. XLN5 plus 2 L and 5 equals XLN6. Let me go back here. Let me just do this one more time. So you just grab this, jump it over here. I'm just gonna redo that ending again. Got a little messy. So you get the X's on the same side, factor out the X. Like that, and then divide. Like that, like that. Boom, x is alone. Now, when you type that into your calculator, you've got to put parentheses around the numerator and the denominator, unless your calculator automatically makes fractions, which a lot of the newer ones do, then great. You don't have to worry about it. But if your calculator lays it all on one flat line, then you're going to need to, you're going to, need to do parentheses 2ln5, and it even does its own little set of parentheses, divided by parentheses ln6 minus ln5, like that. And you should get, what was the answer? 17.6549 uh, but then you're supposed to round that, 17.655. There it is. Is that good? Coming out with that okay? So remember, that goes for anything you do in the graphing cal or in any calculator. You know, if you've got more than one item in the numerator and denominator, you've got to parenthesize them. Well, if it lays it flat, unless you have the new kind. Questions? Is that good? All right. So we have e to the minus 0.94t equals 0.33. Yeah. All right, t's our variable. Remember, remember, e's not a variable. That's just a special number like pi is a special number, right? E's a two-point-something special number like pi is a three-point-something special number. I don't care about that. My focus is the t. T's my variable. It's like my x, right? And where is t sitting? In the power zone. So what does that mean we're going to do? Natural log, both sides. Natural log. When, it, when the x or the t or whatever climbs into power, You've got to get it out of power. You've got to dethrone it. Natural log both sides. So natural log both sides. And that power drops down to the front. We good to there? Okay, you guys have your calculator. What's L in the V? It is 1. Yeah, you can check that if you want on the calculator. That's, that's always going to be 1. L in the V is just 1. It just, they cancel each other out. So what does that mean? Then we just have negative 0.94t is L in the 0.33. How do we finish getting t alone? Now let's just divide, right? Whoops, that is not what I meant to do. Cancel. So there it is. And do they want, what do they want, this? Four decimal places? I'm getting, um, what am I getting? 1.1794. Point one seven nine four. Did you guys get that? Yeah. On the calculator? Rounded to four decimal. Questions. <coughs> Good. Am I going too fast?
No questions? All right. All right. So 2e to the 7x plus 7 equals 8. Yeah. <coughs> Try that one. You know, let me, let me write out some new steps. <laughs> they're, they're changing one thing up. So when x in power, really your first step is get the base, the base to the power thing, get that thing alone, and then L in both sides. Yeah, so really... Do you see what I'm talking about? The first step is you got to get rid of that 2. You really got to get that 2 out of there. Because he's not involved in the power thing, right? He's just out front. The 2 is not being raised to the 7x plus 7 power, just the e. So get that 2 out of there. He's going to mess you up. So now do the L into both sides. That's the extra wrinkle they're throwing in, a little curveball on that one. They're doing the change-up pitch to throw you off. You see that? you got to get rid of that number in the front. So if you have like a number in the front or behind, some other number that's next to the base power thing, get rid of that thing first. Then do the L on both sides. Bring that power down. All right. So we'll do L in, L in both sides and then the whole power comes down is that good What's the ln of e? Remember, that's just one. Yeah, so that just vanishes, basically. One times anything just goes away, right? So we just have 7x plus 7 equals ln of 4. Subtract 7. We, I can't go 4 minus 7 is negative 3, right? That 4 is buried, plugged into a function. It's stuck in there. So bring it up here. So I've got 7x is... Ln4 minus 7. Last step, divide by 7. There we go. I don't know if they want to, yeah, they want a decimal, so just hit the buttons on your calculator on that. Remember, you got to put parentheses around that numerator. Question? So we're going to have to put parentheses around Ln4 minus 7? Yep, exactly. Unless you have one that makes fractions automatically. I'm getting um, negative point eight oh one nine five. Eight oh one nine five. They said four places. Negative point eight oh one nine five. So four places. Negative point eight oh two oh, huh? Right, nineteen five rounds to twenty. You guys getting that on the calculator okay? No. So print size, yeah, if you gotta put parentheses around that numerator, because whenever there's more than one item. In a numerator or denominator, you've got to parenthesize it. You don't, have to, you don't have to put parentheses around the denominator. There's only one thing down there. Questions? Are we good? So these take a lot of practice. All right, let's try this one. Capital A equals capital E, little e, to the negative PR, PR. Yeah, the capital E is different than the little e. The little e is the special number. Like the two point whatever special number, right? All right. You try that one. Good. Yeah, first step is you've got to get rid of the capital E, don't you? Right? Because we can't have numbers in front. So, first step, before you do the natural log of both sides, first divide by the capital E. Get rid of that. Then do natural log of both sides. I'm going to run through rule. Abdullah is here. And Nicholas is here. And Abraham is here. 
Edward Bowen is here. And Michael is here. And Daraj is here. And Derek Clower is here. And Monique is here. And Lisa Gonzalez is here. And Brandon Grogan is here. And Josh Harlan is here. Brandon Kehoe is here. And Yeleni Lopez is here. And Chu Lor. Chu Lor, no. And Scott Parker. Scott and Scott. And Kevin Peister. Here. And Kelsey Fan. Kelsey and Kelsey. And Nelson Roberts is here. And Alexander Rodriguez is here. And Corelli Ruiz. No Corelli. And Alexander Sanborn. Here. That's right. And Alexander Shunel. Sure. Right? Shunel? Shane. Shane. Deesum is here. And Amanda Smith is here. And Kevin Stevenson is here. And Jesus uh, Valdez is here. Right. So, right. so you guys getting that okay? So first step, divide by that capital E. Boom. Capital A over capital E is E to the minus PR. Good so far? So we'll get the base to the power thing alone first. Then you take the ln of both sides. That's what's going to bring the power down, right? So ln of both sides. ln here, ln there. Okay, so capital A over E. E to the minus PR. And then what? The power drops down, right? So we got ln of A over E equals minus PR. The whole minus PR. And then the ln E is just one, so that's gone. Right? So what do we have? Bring it up here. We have ln of capital A over capital E equals minus PR, because the ln little e just dropped away. Well, what are we trying to even solve for here? P. Oh, P. Yeah, I better look at, the, look at the question. That's always helpful. P. So they want P, so divide by the minus R. Boom, boom. So, oh, no, wait a minute. They wrote, they've written it different, haven't they? Is, is this one the same? Yeah, that minus 1 over r in the front is the same, right? It's, it's still it's the minus r divided. You can put the minus 1 over r in the front. That's still a minus r divided, isn't it? Whether you put it under, whether you put 1 over in the front, right? Dividing by 2 is the same as a half, right? Same answer, yeah. Is that good? I don't care on a test. I don't care which way you put it. I'm good with all those ways. I'm just showing you how to make Math Excel happy. Is that good question on that one? He's making yeah, sense? Just look at the answer to the divided, or it's going to be D. The other three are, are not going to work. You just knew right away? Yeah, because for one, you're not going to have the, nap, or the, the E anymore, and then you're solving for P, so P's not going to be the fraction. Oh, yeah, you're getting rid of the little E, and you're not supposed to have P. <laughs> yeah. I know, multiple choice tests are, some, sometimes, depending on how they do it, can be, can be silly. All right, so. Okay, there we go, let's try it. All right, log base 2 of x plus 3 plus log base 2 of x minus 3 equals 4. All right, so what have we learned about, so this, so trying to give you the tags here, we've been, Doing, we've been doing x's in the power zone. This is different now. This is logs. So what have we learned? What's the game plan when we see logs? We lose them. We count them down and lose them. Right? Two logs, one log, no log. That's what you should think right away. When you see logs in there, you think, count them down. Two logs, the next line, there should be one log. Line after that should be no logs. Two logs, one log, no logs. See if you remember. Hopefully that will drive you forward, just remembering the log count down thing. That helps. So you're thinking right now, how do I make those two logs become one log? Remember what we learned? The properties. Adding becomes times, subtraction becomes divide. Remember those properties? All the log properties. Yeah, I don't know how she would do it.
Um, that's true, actually. <laughs> but, um, yeah, okay, so, so the, what we learned, so this is two logs. Next line, we want it to be one log. How do you make two logs into one log? Adding for two logs becomes times. See how those are multiplied now? These are, these are times. Now, if this had been minus in the middle instead of plus, then it would have been over x minus 3, right? It would have been divide. It's all about what's in the middle, right? Adding becomes multiply. Subtraction becomes divide when you go from two logs to one log. All right, so now one line, next line, no logs. So, so that means I'm going to lose the log. What happens when you lose the log? Yeah, base stays, the two will stay the low down. The other two, which meaning all that x stuff and the four, trade position at a two to all that x stuff, it's two to the four, and all that x stuff goes over that. Getting the hang of those steps more? Two logs, one log, no log. When you lose the log, base stays the base, other two switch. Now, can you solve it from there? Yeah, I got to foil out the right side. Uh huh. So 2 to the 4th is 16. This will become x squared minus 3x. Boom, 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 boom. You got to foil, right? Remember all that? These cancel. Not going too quick. Remember all that? From your algebra days, those happy algebra days. Those happy days. Remember all that stuff? Like this, I just foiled the right side. Now we're trying to solve for x. Do it that way. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's what I've said in the past. You, or you could just get the x squared alone and root it. It'll work either way. Yeah. So I've, I've given you, again, let me just stick with what I've given you before. I've said whenever you have x squared with an equal sign, you get a zero, right? Isn't that what I've always been trying to help you to do? Is get a zero and factor, right? So let's just stay with that. That's right. When you see x squared, so there's a lot you got to keep together, huh? A lot of little charts and plans, depending on what you see. When you see x squared, you've got to think, okay, get a zero. So that means subtract 16 from both sides. That'll get a zero. x squared minus 25. We okay to there? I'm going to switch screens here. Zero is x squared minus 25. Did you get all that down? Is that okay? So zero is x squared minus 25. Now we've got to so we get a zero, which we did. Now factor. Yeah, the factors. X plus five, x minus five. Everybody getting this all down? So that factor is x plus five, x minus five. And then what do you do from there? They each get their own zero for stuff, don't they? Right, because if two things, you, you get that one logically, if two things multiply to be zero, either one could be zero to make them times and become zero, right? So then, you know the drill from there. Jump, you can skip this step if you want, I don't care. Negative five, positive five. So the answers are negative five and positive five, maybe. We've got to check them, remember? You've got to, for logs, any problem that starts with a log in it, it did, You've got to take your answers, plug them in, and make back on the original, back in the before you did any steps, the original question, make sure the inside of, of the logs is not zero or negative. If it is, throw, throw that answer away. So if you go back here to the original and you put in the um, negative, uh, the positive 5 is, is good. Put the, This is going to be 5 minus 3 is going to be 2. That's good. It's not negative. It's not zero. But the negative 5 is not going to work. He'll make the insides of those logs negative. So throw him away. The answer is only regular 5. Is that okay? You okay with all those steps? Getting the hang of all that and then all this? Questions I can answer? We're doing a lot. Of Okay, so log base 3 of the square root of 3y squared minus 3 equals a half. Ooh. All right. What's the game plan? Add 3. Add the 3 is a good place to start. 
hey, why don't we just make this 0.5? Decimals are easier to work with, right? Let's add 3 to both sides. 3.5 over there. We're good so far. Just add the 3. All right, let me let you make the next step. What are we always doing with logs? Losing them. Lose that log. Lose that log. When you lose the log, the base stays the base. The other two switch. Mm. Right? You switch instead of 3 to that root stuff, it's 3 to the 3.5, and the root of 3y squared goes to the other side. Good so far. Now, I don't know what 3 to the 3.5 is. I don't think it's clean, is it? No, something ugly. So I'm just going <laughs> to leave it 3 to the 3.5. All right. Oh, yeah. Okay. So what do we do next? We're trying to solve for y. You got a root in there. But why is, why is over here saying... I want to be alone. Solve for me. Get this root off of me. Get this three off me. Get this two off me so I can be alone. I'll be your answer. That's what we're trying to do. Get that Y alone, right? Got to get this stuff off of the Y. So let's start with the root. Right? Like an onion. Kill an onion. I'll work in your outside layer of the onion. Work all the way down. So let's get rid of the outer layer first. How do you get rid of that root? Second power is the opposite of a root. Huh? So we're going to second power both sides. Two power. If you're to one side, you have no choice but to do the same thing to the other. They're really pulling out a lot of algebra here from your background. So rooting cancels squaring. So that's gone. So that just makes 3y squared. No more root. The root was canceled out by the 2 power. 2 powers cancel roots. What happens on the other side? 3.5 and 2 multiply. Yeah. This and this times 3 to the 7th. And 3 to the 7th is a number. You have that in your calculator? Something big. I don't know what it is. I'm going to do it here. Uh, 2187. We're almost there. So we have 2187 is 3y squared. That good? Everybody see how we got rid of that root? We just two powered both sides. And the 2 multiplied the 3.5 to make it 7. Now, what do we do? Now it's easy. Now you know. Divide by 3. What is that? 729 is y squared. And then root it. Right? And I'm getting on my calculator 27. Whew. Did you guys get that? 27. Is it plus or minus 27 or just 27? Mm, yeah, good point. When you put a root on both sides, you're supposed to put plus or minus. Yeah, I could write plus or minus 27. Oh, you're right, and they're both keepers. I was going to say, and, but the negative is no good because this is a log, and you can't make the inside of a log negative, but it's squared. Yeah, plus or minus 27 plugged in there is going to be okay because it's squared. It's going to be positive. The inside of the log will be positive. They're both keepers. Yeah, that's why they said use a comma to separate answers. Yeah, so the answer is plus 27 comma minus 27. They want both answers. So what we're seeing right now is what knocks people out of this class. It's all this algebra. I'm not saying it to discourage you, but to let you know if, if it's important to you to pass this class, if this affects your future, then you, you need to spend time on this stuff. I had to. You know, I'm always surprised at how, how casual everybody approaches math. There's all this math fear. You know, my years of 20, a lot of years now, 24 years of teaching. I've experienced lots of fear of math, but not a lot of correct responses to that. I feared math too. 
and and it, and and so the, the correct response is to study like crazy. So that so this is it. It's all this algebra mess. This is what gets people. It's all this. Algebra. I'm glad to help you, Roberto. Did, where do you write all these hours are back there? There's Roberto's hours. He's there to help. You know, between now and next Thursday. Really master this section of homework. You know, you can go over and over again, right? You can ask for new problems that don't affect your grade after you finished it. You know, after you use the help button a lot, you know, and go through again. Just go, go to where you can really do these, and it takes lots of practice. Just over and over again. My, my, um, my sweet wife, she would, when, when we took math classes, well, we didn't take, I took one math class with her at Cal Poly, but when she would take classes, she would always do all the math problems three times in a class. She would laugh at my practice exams. She thinks that's silly. She thinks that's just weak. That's just not enough practice. Like, she would do all the homework, and then before, like, before our Thursday exam, she would do all these sections again that are on the exam, every problem, again. You know, practice exam. She'd go, that's not nearly enough practice. And then before the final, she would start a couple weeks early and do every problem in the course third time. Now, I didn't work as hard as my wife. I never have. But, um, <laughs> but you know, people do work hard. That's what people do who are doing well in college-level math and science. They're working really hard. That's what it takes. You got it. It's not like, you know, it's not like some subjects that are a little more obvious. You know, some subjects it's a little more common sense. It's like Chinese, huh? I mean, it's just a lot. You really got to be on the details. You got to go over them and over them and over again. So I encourage you to do that. You said the practice exam is basically going to be the test with just different numbers. Oh yeah, very similar. Same amount of problems, same kinds of problems, different numbers, different particular problems. Yeah, yeah, very similar. Yeah, and which are just homework problems, you'll say. They're just a bunch of homework questions, yeah. So practice this. I know this is how it's going to work. All right, let's solve that one. 5 to the x squared minus 4 is 15. Let me let you do the first step there. Oh, yeah, I'm going to have to show you something different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what's that first step? Uh, no, we can't divide by that 5. Well, what would happen to that x squared minus 4? That x is on him. Oh. Yeah, can't do that. No, so well, what, needs to, what needs to occur to us? To the law, to the x has said, I'm in power. Yeah. Yeah. And that means we're going to log you, right? Natural log, right? When x climbs into power, natural log both sides. Natural log. So that's what gets it out of power. So natural log both sides. When x climbs into power, and then the whole power drops down. All right, that's the great quality of a log. We get to there. That's what we do whenever x is in power. Natural log of both sides. Now, now what? Yeah, let's, let's get that ln5 off of there, huh? Boom. x squared minus 4 is ln15 over ln5. You can try dividing in your calculator. It'll be nothing nice. So I'm just going to leave it. So I'm ugly decimal. So I'm just going to leave it. But, I mean, you can get the decimal. Yeah, maybe I'll just get the decimal. What is it? So coming up here. So it's x squared minus 4 is... 2.2321. Or 2... Sorry. 2.2321, okay. Now, they want uh, four places, don't they? What that means is, if they want four places in the end, you better work with six or seven along the way. Because when, you, when, when you're rounding halfway through a problem or partway through a problem, you, uh, you need more accuracy than you want in the end because you'll do things that will affect so things. Better, so I better get a couple more. Do you, do you have, let me, 6.5? I don't know if I can squeeze them in. Six five at the end of the screen. Yeah, good. Yeah, two point two three two one six five. All right. Now, normally I'm gonna change the game plan here. Normally with x squared, I tell you get a zero, and factor. That's not gonna work this time. Do you remember from algebra the other way? Um, you no that yeah that's true, but it won't help us in this case. Um, we just need to add the four over. Just add the four over. And then root it, 6.232165, and then just put the root on both sides. So, so that's the other way to handle an x squared. Root 
root and plus or minus um, on that. Yeah, so it's going to be whatever the square root of that is, plus or minus. So it's going to be 2 point something. 2 point, somebody got that? 49643. Four, All right? So I'll just go four places. 2.4964. Is that good? Let me check all the numbers up there. Wait, wait. I, I got something different for that LN15 over LN5. Okay. Yeah. Wait a minute. You done lost me now. All right. All right. Yeah. Let's go back here. All right. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's a good time to, for me to point out on the test. I would just always hit the buttons twice because it's so easy to hit a wrong button, isn't it? Just run them and run them again. If it's the same thing twice, it's very likely you didn't mess up. Um, just on a test, you know, have techniques like that to help. 1.682606. Oh, Add the 4. So what you guys getting? 5.682606. And then root it, root it, plus or minus. So you know how to use the answer button in your calculator. You can just hit root, and then the answer button, which means the previous answer. It makes it real convenient. You don't have to write it down, type it in again, and all that kind of stuff. 1.2972, it'll round to, plus or minus. Which is the answer button? 1.2972. It's different in different calculators. TI-84. Yeah, down the bottom. TI-84, it's in the very bottom. So you got to hit second answer. And it'll use the answer from the last string. Final answer is there. We good there? Questions on that one? Okay. So they're giving me this big formula. G, I'll just say, equals 0. Point, what is that number? 3, 6, 5, 3, 8, 8 times 1.079188 to the T. And they're saying on part A, the consumer debt will reach $2 trillion in the early part of the year, boom. So it's a, it's a track in the consumer debt. So how do we do it? What do they want me to do? First off, there's just, what are they even talking about? Like, what am I even supposed to do? No, so the main thing to do is track with the letters. Be really clear on the letters. Let's, let's see what it says. The amount of debt in trillions is G. So G is the debt. And they're saying the debt is 2 trillion. So G is 2. Okay, with that first off, so I just track that through. It said G is the amount of debt, and it says the debt is 2 million, so plug in 2 for G. Did you track with me on that? That's just by looking at the words. So basically, I got to solve for T. Plug in 2 for G. And then in part B, you'll just plug in 9 for G and solve, right? So I got to solve this now, this equation, having plugged in 2, solve for T. How do I solve for T? Good idea. Let's divide by that big old ugly number there. 0 0.365388, 0 0.365388, like that. It was a mess. So, um, yeah, I don't, that's, that's going to be some ugly decimal thing. 2 divided by 0 0.365388. I'm getting, what, 5 point four seven three six three three five oh seven i'm going to use as much always use as much accuracy as you can as many decimals as your calculator will give you when you're still in the middle of the problem and you have more steps to go right don't you guys hear me don't round too abruptly in the middle of a problem in the middle use all you can to get the right accuracy by the end don't round in the middle just keep keep going when you're in the middle of the problem because i'm to here now Trying to solve for T. Yeah, T says I'm in power. We know what to do. Natural log of both sides, right? Whenever that letter's in power, natural log of both sides. I'm going to change screen. 
five point well I got it on my screen here. So it was five point four seven three six three three five zero oh seven equals and then I one point oh seven nine one eight eight. One come on, stop that. One point oh seven nine one eight eight to the T power. All right, so yeah, so we're going to I get that right. One point oh seven nine one eight eight. Yeah, I'm gonna natural log like we've been doing all hour. Natural log, natural log, both sides. Five point four seven three six three three five oh seven one point oh seven nine one eight eight to the T, and the power will come down. It's a long problem. And then divide. Natural log 1.079188. Natural log 1.079188. Boom. All right. What a mess. What a mess. Okay. So, if you have the answer button, it makes life easy. Hit natural log and then just have that answer that was on your screen. Divided by... Natural log of 1.079188. So I would type this twice if it was my test. 2.306. That's good enough. Uh, that's my T. We're running out of time here. So that's my T. Now, what's the answer to the question? Did you notice what they said about T back here? T equals 0 is 1980. Remember time? They always set a starting time. So T equals 0 is 1980. So you have to add 1980 to this, because this started in 1980. So if you add 22 to that, that's the year 2002.306. So it's the year 2002. Does that make sense? It's in the year 2002. Because time zero started in 1980. Is that good? Questions on that? Let me make sure I didn't leave you.